Hello, my friends. I am the Synodic Scribe, your curator of all things lore. And today, I actually was happy to see that the benchmark trailer for Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail dropped just a couple hours before I was going to bed last night, so I decided that I would exert some patience so that we might be able to enjoy this fresh perspective together today. So first, we're just going to watch the trailer together, I'm going to express my interest in a few things as we go along, and then afterwards I'm going to use my understanding of the Final Fantasy XIV universe to help break down some of the more interesting things that we're most likely going to see. And I am certain that I'm going to see some interesting things here, simply because, well, these trailers are meant to get people hype. They are designed specifically to get uh, players interested in either buying the expansion or continuing to sub. So, uh, I'm expecting a significant showcase here. So, without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? Creative Business Unit 3. Oh, Chocobo on the boat. I wonder if Chocobos can get seasick. <laughs> Is that with the new graphics? Huh. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my judgment on that. Awaken, Big Bird. There's treasure to be had. Imagine if this was how you went uh, searching for treasure instead of just like a two second animation. Well, Fruity Snacks is gonna break that down. Pretty. And here we go with all the new abilities. Warrior of Light, where are you going? PTFO! PTFO, stop running! Oh, there he goes. I assume that's going to be an S-Rank. Hope people are looking forward to new hunt trains. Whoa! Hello, eyeballs! Do you think he sees me? I think he sees me. Thank you, small friend.
floating alligator. <laughs> just... Look, there's an entire breakdown of ethereal currents I could go into, but... Ooh! More combat stuff. Dark Knight better get some love in this expansion, I swear. Ooh, here we go. Yeah! Give him that single target, let me break. Take that, Autark. Awesome! Well, that seems to be the entirety of the Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail benchmark trailer. I don't think the actual benchmark is out yet. Uh, maybe it uh, will be soon. Though, honestly, I will confess, just looking at uh, that structure in the background... It already feels very reminiscent of the design showcase for uh, Radzat Han. Because it also kind of had that, or has that kind of city built larger the taller it gets kind of look. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm just remembering funny. But, that was a... Well, it wasn't a bad trailer. So let's try one more time and break down some of the things I saw during that entire event. Some things I may want to address, talk about, or clarify for just lore fun. And I look forward to seeing your thoughts in the comment section below after we're done here. So let's, let's look through this again with a more inquisitive eye. Now, some people might be wondering, how are we traversing the entirety of the western sea of Eorzea in a dinky little boat? And the answer is, or likely not, it's likely going to be a full-sized ship. They're most likely doing this for just cinematic preferences, because, uh, I'm going to be honest, a, a small little ship like this, traversing those uh, waters, which historically have been infamously treacherous, uh, just does not seem viable. Okay, now don't get me wrong, I'm very excited for the graphical update to uh, Final Fantasy XIV, but I don't know, my internet instincts are telling me that the this trailer face is going to get memed on. I, the instincts are telling me. <laughs> I, I can't explain why. Now, I'm going to be honest, at a cursory glance at this map, what we're looking at is more or less a lot of gibberish. I mean, sure, you have outlined pathways for sure, but a lot of the symbolism here, unless it is etched into the terrain itself, is more or less just placeholders, and there's no legend 
in the corners of the map, so I can't even tell... Hmm. No, yeah. Uh, honestly, if this map does show up in the MSQ, uh, I'd be curious to learn the significance of some of these symbols. If not, I would not be surprised if this map never shows up again. Now, for those wondering, could I go into the lore of the aquatic life here? The answer is yes, I could. But we already have someone for that. If you want to learn more about the fish, aquatic life, and all things marine biology within Fall Fantasy XIV, I suggest you go to Fruity Snacks and follow them. Because they're already on top of that game. And I'm not about to step on their toes. <laughs> All right, so something that always interests me in expansions like this is when we see creatures from previous locations or time periods or whatever in new locations. Now, the easy answer as to why we're seeing the same design creatures and entities in completely different places in the world is simply because uh, video game limitations. The company is reusing assets from previous expansions and other games to essentially save time and money. That is why you're saying that's the simple answer. Is there a deeper lore reason as to why we're seeing new creatures in different locations or similar creatures in different locations? There can be, but more often than not, there is no in-depth reason. They're just reusing assets. But I will say this. I always do think, from a lore perspective, I always wonder, how do these creatures get from point A to point B? Where did they originally start, and how did they migrate to these different parts of the world? Did they originate at the New World within, a, let's say, the fourth um, uh, during the Fourth Astral Era, and then the Fifth Astral Era created an event that saw them migrate, much like how the Makote migrated across the Frozen Tundra? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe. But I, from a lore perspective, I am always curious. It's like, do I know that there's probably no explanation? Yes. But does that stop me from wondering how these creatures may or may not have gotten from different parts of the world to another? Of course not. I'm going to speculate. I'm going to think and theorize. And I'd be curious to hear your opinions as well. Alright, I that is definitely Nidhogg. I I thought that's what I saw originally. So, I assume that was a gunbreaker that we saw do the explosion first, but I assume the Dragoon mains are going to be very curious as to what they're looking at here. And I'm going to shoot down the immediate assumption that the Dragoon is now somehow in control of Nidhogg's soul. No. That is most likely, most definitely not the case, unless the writers specifically say otherwise. And the reason being is this. Uh, Nidhogg, uh, Nidhogg's soul, rather, unless the writers have decided to contradict themselves again, uh, is currently in the ethereal realm of the source. His soul is there, and therefore cannot be drawn upon. So, that begs the question, why is a projection like this taking his form so accurately? And the answer is, uh, rather elementary. It was the Eye of Nidhogg that unlocked the Warrior of Light's potential as the Azure Dragoon, meaning that a portion, a vestige of that symbiotic aether 
was bestowed upon the Warrior of Light to unlock that, I suppose you would call, draconic potential. So it only makes sense that the more a Jagoon draws upon, feeds, and taps into that original source of power, that power starts to reflect or show itself in the form of the one who bestowed it in the first place, its original form. And that's likely what we're seeing here. The ether is simply coalescing into the form that it originally once came from. Now, if this was a real hunt train, you wouldn't see people all spread out fighting random mobs so efficiently. Everyone would be moving in one giant line, uh, clumping up around mobs one at a time. <laughs> oh, man. I love a good hunt train, though. Don't get me wrong. Looks like uh, an even bigger saw for the machinists. And, and don't forget, the entire reason the Machinist is able to perform these feats and produce these tools and weapons is because of the Ethero Transformer on their hip. I know a lot of Machinist mains have said they hate the, bo the lunchbox on their hip, they wish it was gone, but I have to remind you, like, from a lore perspective, without that lunchbox, you can't do anything. So, maybe pet the lunchbox now and then. Tell it how much you appreciate all the special powers and abilities it gives you. It, it, it might just give you a big buzzsaw like this one. God, I'm going to be so excited to play Viper. That twin blade has been in my mind for a while. It's been living rent-free in my brain, man. Oh, I'm so excited to get my hands on this job. Okay, so I assume that tablet holds some kind of significance, and this creature understands where the source of that iconography can be found and is now pointing to it with their very big finger. Uh, it looks like they're pointing to an unmarked area of the map, so... Or uh, pointing to one of the specific symbols under uh, the nail. Uh, hard to tell. Ah, this actually goes back into what I was saying earlier about creatures showing up or not showing up in different parts of the world. Like, for instance, we have these alpacas over here in the New World, yes? And that begs the question, how come uh, they never migrated or were bred in different parts of the world, uh, despite us seeing creatures from Eorzea, Othar, and Ilsebard? over in the new world so i don't know it's just a fun thought experiment to me to wonder how these animals and species have moved between the different continents while some haven't so another again food for thought
So the a lot of people uh, have done uh, the I think it was the crafting quests for the researchers in Old Charlene at this point, and they actually go into a little bit of a tangent of some researchers going into wanting to understand how and why some creatures have developed the ability to fly, uh, despite having no capacity for it before. Like, it's a phenomena that Old Charlene is in fact researching at this very moment. And the simple answer is that while you cannot see them, uh, ethereal wind is constantly present within the air because it is the air. And so long as a creature or a person knows how to tap into and navigate that ethereal stream, you can in fact fly. You do not need uh, jets or wings or s specialized equipment to fly in the universe of Final Fantasy XIV. You simply need to know how to manipulate the ether into producing flight. In fact, that's the entire reason you have characters and trial bosses that are able to float or fly uh, without help, much like how Shiva uh, was able to. In fact, there's nothing stopping the Warrior of Light from flying as well, so long as they not only had the power to ride these currents, but had the knowledge on how to in the first place. Or, uh, not the knowledge, but at least the instinct to, if that makes sense. Now, if a previous Final Fantasy XIV uh, trailer design has taught me anything, this is likely some low-level dungeon, likely uh, 91, 93, or 95 uh, that we're going to be doing. I mean, it is a little sad that Final Fantasy XIV's design philosophy has become this predictable at this point, but uh, the reason I'm not really commenting on the locations very much is because... We really weren't given much to work with when it comes to the New World, even before the uh, announcement of Dawn Trail was released. So, uh, much of this is brand new to me. And, though of course, every now and then you see me trying to com compartmentalize uh, what we have, what's new, what isn't new, what's asset uh, flopping or flipping, and, like, what else are we seeing that is like, distinct from what we've already seen. And the simple answer is I'm not going to be able to really explain tons about the geography and locale of the New World until we actually get there. So I'm going to hold my tongue for the most part on that. But I will say this, uh, the locations are well designed. I am interested in exploring them for sure. Okay, so this is the Autark. Now, I understand that that's not the title that they were using at the end of uh, post uh, Endwalker. But orig like the Autark is the original title that uh, has been used for the leader of Tural ever since uh, Encyclopedia Eorzea Volume 1, all the way back to when we did the Wanderer's Palace hard mode. When we fought the Mamulja uh, with two heads to free the Tomberries. I mean, he was doing these things. He was trying to prove himself as an individual and a leader to essentially gain right to claim the Autark throne. This guy's position. So, it w I am still interested in learning more about uh, what to expect from him and his take on the Warrior of Light in the future, because it, he seems to be a very trial-by-combat kind of leader. It's like, look, your your philosophies are one thing, but can you defend yourself? <laughs> uh, I, I, I can respect that. A actions speak louder than words at the end of the day.
Now, I will say this. Do I think these abilities and particle effects and designs look cool? Yes. Uh, you can write me down as saying, I love the artistic design and representation of Ether and abilities in Final Fantasy XIV. What I am not looking forward to, however, is the very likely prospect that what we're seeing are just upgraded versions of what we already have. It's nothing new. It's nothing special. It's just a new animation to get you interested in playing the game without really expanding upon or making the job that you've been playing for years now any more interesting. I, that's This is a personal gripe. I will say that. This is a 100% biased personal gripe. But I feel like the game's gone through so much homogenization, so much oversimplification, uh, so many tweaks and adjustments to so many jobs that they've been dumbed down so much that it's getting hard for me to get excited at seeing all these new abilities when I know in my heart of hearts, it's nothing new. We're getting the same thing that we've always gotten. I love the look of these abilities. I do. I love them. I hope that maybe they are more than what they seem. More than just a potency increase. More than just another hit in a chain of potency hits. Maybe it accents or rewards mastery of the job. And the reason I'm so passionate about this, my friends, is because while there's a very big line between gameplay and lore, there is a unique interaction with how some of these abilities are represented in the lore of Final Fantasy XIV. So if the abilities we do in this game are simply reflections of already known abilities and talents, there's no new lore. There's nothing new to learn about the job, nothing new to understand about the job, no new complexities or intrigue to learn about. The job essentially is the same as it was on release, and to me, that's uh, that's a bit boring. I want to see these jobs expand. I want to see them grow as time moves on. I want to see how not only the Warrior of Light expands on what it means to be that job, but what new pathways and ethereal connections they can make in the future. I don't know. I I'm going into a bit of a lore rant, but uh, suffice to say, I love uh, how these abilities look. I just hope they're more than what I assume they are. Uh, ra <laughs> rant over, sorry. Okay, the amount of people that still think Limit Breaks are Dynamis <laughs> makes me laugh. Oh my goodness, and I, I can already tell there are some people in the comments that are going to leave me an essay saying how Limit Breaks are Dynamis, and I'm just going to let them type out their essays. Meanwhile, I'm sitting over here with multiple lines of dialogue talking about how Limit Breaks use Ether, and I'm just going to smile and wave. Oh man. This limit break does look cool, though. I will give it that. Though, again, twin blade, so I am Oh boy, I I will say this, despite ranting a moment ago, I am very much excited for Dawn Trail, and this ex uh, expansion benchmark only reinforces why I'm, I'm excited, because new location, new jobs, new everything, and I don't know, I as a long time player of Final Fantasy XIV, having played since 1.0, I want to see this game grow and evolve beyond its 10-year story now. I want to see what it's capable of beyond its original conception. So, very excited for Dawn Trail. I want the best of this MMO. I want to see them take a risk. I want to see them get their hands dirty and say, things are going to get crazy from here on out and you're going to love it. So, I don't know. I'm hype. 
Uh, but let me know your opinions down in the comment section below. I am very curious to see how some of you feel about not only the trailer, but what to expect from either the game, gameplay, and most importantly, the lore, my friends. So, I have rambled on long enough, and I will leave you to doing your thing, and as always, I hope you are having an amazing day, and I hope you have an even more amazing week. So, until we meet again, stay safe, my friends.